Yo, yo, welcome to the show. Today I'm talking about Mech Warrior 5. It's the first Mech Warrior campaign game in a long ass time. We are talking 15 years, y'all. And although it takes place in the same universe as Battletech, which was released back in 2018, I am not counting that here because it's a totally different series. However, I am going to be comparing the two quite a bit because Battletech really set the bar high and in my opinion, set the standard for quite a few things that I was hoping to see in Mech Warrior Mercenaries. Uh, I used to play the old school Mech Warriors way back in the day. It has been such a long time, so I was really stoked to jump back in this world. <sighs> and if you couldn't tell from the intro, I am going to have a lot to say about Mech Warrior 5. And spoiler alert, it ain't good. So let's get right at it and see how badly my dreams got crushed. tuning in y'all and when I was a young lad Mech Warrior was one of those games that just felt so good to play you hop in into a powerful mech using badass weapons in an awesome sci-fi universe it was a kid's dream <laughs> I loved it I would just spend hours drifting off into fantasy land pretending that I was a mech pilot it was awesome so fast forward it's been over 15 years and we are returning to the MechWarrior franchise. <laughs> it's incredible. All I could think about before playing it was recreating some of the experiences that I had when I was a kid, except now I could only imagine how beautiful it would look, how cool of a story it could be, and how good it would feel to just smash around in my mech and destroy shit all over the place. I had my hopes high, y'all. <laughs> and that's probably why it hurt so damn much when they came crashing down. <laughs> Let's kick things off with the gameplay. Let's start with the good stuff, because honestly, there's not much of that to cover here. If you have any interest in a mech warrior game, at the most basic level, it's because there's a part of you that either enjoys controlling, strategizing, or fighting in a game using mechs, or at least the idea of doing so. And this is actually one thing Mech Warrior 5 does well and kept me playing for as long as I did. Traversing and jump jetting across the landscapes, both in first and third person, feels really good. I could feel the weight of each mech based on their tonnage, which ranges from light and fast to extremely heavy and slow, and there's a ton of different mechs to use in each weight class. The movements, aiming, and just being in your mech, especially in battle with your squad of lancers, is an awesome feeling. They added in just the perfect amount of resistance to every torso adjustment when looking around or aiming, making them feel big and heavy and strafing left or right while shooting at any other angle while having to track when to adjust your mech's legs to realign back up with your upper half was really well done. There's just a cool feeling I get from actually controlling a mech, which I was hoping for and really happy to see. There's also a plethora of weapons ranging from short to long range missiles, lasers, machine guns, flamethrowers, and ballistics, which were all fun as hell to use and made it a joy to fight in the game. Overall, it felt like I was in a mech, which was great because you spend most of your time on the battlefield using them. So they at least got that part right. I also got to give props to how you're able to give orders and control your squad of lancers. After you grow your merc business and start making enough dough to hire other pilots and purchase mechs for them to use, you'll be able to take a team of three other lancers with you out onto the battlefield. 
As a full squad or individually, you can give them orders to either follow you, move to a specific location, or attack a particular target. And without a doubt, y'all, using my mech and ordering my lancers around the battlefield to complete contracts together was the coolest part of the game for me. So props given where props are due. These aspects aren't perfect though. Firstly, the list of squad commands that are available to you are limited in my opinion. For instance, I would have loved to see a roam or scout command for my lancers. There were so many cases where more options like these would have either given you more strategic options or just made doing missions riskier and more fun by splitting up to try and finish a contract. At the end of the day, these limitations just broke immersion for me because I couldn't help but think about how I wished I could do those things in the game so often. Executing more advanced strategies or simply doing shit differently in the game to finish missions just isn't possible with how limited the mechanics and commands are, and it didn't take long each session that I played for the fighting to feel really surface level. And even as cool as the weapons were, those also weren't perfect. They lacked a sense of power in my opinion. There was straight up a lack of visual feedback that could have easily given certain weapons way more punch. Instead, regardless of what I was firing, all the weapons felt the same to me for the most part. On top of that, I was also really disappointed to not see a couple attack abilities that were in the 2018 battle tech. There was a close range melee and a badass aerial attack you could perform by using your jump jets to fly up and then come crashing down on top of enemies. <laughs> Both those were killer in Battletech. And Battletech is in third person, so all I could think was how cool it would be to do it in first person in Mech Warrior. Ah, <sighs> it's a real shame that they weren't in the game. It's a step backwards in my opinion, and after how much grinding the game forces you to do, the combat feels boring and repetitive after not very long. <laughs> and yeah, it didn't take long to get into the bad shit. So with that said, Let's get dirty, y'all, and dive into the dark, swampy parts of the gameplay that make it extremely difficult to get through. And when I say get through, what I really mean is that I chose to stop playing MechWarrior 5 before finishing it. It's rare for me to not finish a game, but I stopped on this one for good reasons that I'm going to start talking about now. I did put in over 40 hours, which for me was absolutely enough to review the game based on my experience, and to be honest, that's probably 20 hours too long. Judging by the main quest missions I completed, it looks like I made it about two thirds of the way through the game. But from the gameplay side of things, MechWarrior 5 commits a few serious crimes that totally ruined the experience for me. It's first and worst big issue is that it is a utter grind fest. I'm gonna repeat that one more time. It's an utter grind fest. The game uses procedural generation to create its worlds, and with a combination of limited assets and poor design, you are forced to play the same missions against the same enemies on planets that are not creatively designed over and over and over again. And it forces you to do this by gating the main story quest behind leveling up your clan rank in the game. So starting out, you get to create your own mercenary business or clan as they call it. And from there, you need to gain experience by completing contracts that consist of around four different types of missions that are all pretty much the same. And by finishing them, you'll gain the experience that eventually allows you to level up your rank. Each time you level up, you unlock a main quest mission that takes you deeper across the inner sphere and progresses the quote unquote story. Leveling up takes a ton of time though. Way, way, way too much time, y'all. On top of that, mission difficulty is largely based on the damage capability and durability of your mechs mixed with your pilot's trait levels. So it's less about actually doing skillful things in the game versus putting in more time, which makes the grindy experience even worse. It just doesn't feel rewarding either. It feels like you're either gonna be the one getting completely stomped or the one doing the stomping, depending on what stats you have compared to your enemies. Typically it's the latter as well, which made most of the game a boring cakewalk for me. The backdrop of all this is that you have to manage and grow your mercenary business, which in particular is complete garbage. Unlike the 2018 Battletech, which had a robust gameplay system built around managing your ship upgrades, pilot traits, 
mech and pilot costs, along with influencing morale and dealing with heavy losses to your income caused by interesting story arcs, MechWarrior's system is just basic and boring. It has none of the things that made Battletech's gameplay so interesting, and I never felt at risk of running out of money for any reason. It's a huge missed opportunity that could have been really engaging. In Battletech, you had to upgrade your ship and repair damages to both keep your business running and keep morale high. And if those aspects were neglected, things would cost more, pilots took longer to heal, and their performance lowered in the battlefield if they weren't in a healthy state of mind. I felt invested in growing and improving things in Battletech. But in MechWarrior 5, there's just a profit and dues number at the top right of your screen that doesn't mean shit in the grand scheme of things. I easily paid my monthly bills, repaired mechs, and hired pilots without any concern with how I might travel to the next planet, buy my next mech, or even win the next fight based on the condition of my crew. <laughs> and yo, that's pretty much it, sadly. I really wish I had more good things to say here, truly. I think they could easily fix the grind issue as well by allowing you to level up your clan rank and earn more money faster. But that's not the case. Instead, you're forced to spend your time playing repetitive, easy contracts that are all the same and then hit that repeat button until you start questioning what the hell you're doing with your life. <laughs> It's a big disappointment, y'all. I love this franchise, but the gameplay in MechWarrior 5 is like putting on a VR headset for the first time back in the 90s. Before you put it on, you're like, what, this is gonna be amazing. Then you put it on and you're like, ugh, no, no. <laughs> gameplay is getting a two out of five stars. Graphics are up next, yo, and the chopping block ain't going nowhere. But let's hit some of the good stuff first. Firstly, the physics in the game were honestly all right. Launching your mech into the air with your jump jets and landing was really cool and felt great. Shooting helicopters out of the sky and watching them sail down into a big explosion or blowing up tanks and seeing their parts roll down hillsides was pretty damn cool. The mech designs were good too. You could trick them out, paint them up, and when you started taking damage in battle, it was awesome blasting off the limbs of your enemies or even losing your own. It made fighting dynamic, and if you lost a limb that had a badass, expensive new weapon you just refitted it with, it was heartbreaking to watch it get destroyed, but also injected a little bit of tension in there. I really liked those aspects about it. Outside of that though, the game just looks dated as hell. First of all, the textures are complete shit. The mechs, landscapes, buildings, and skyscape all lack definition. The lighting and shadows are horrible too. Maxing out the game to ultra on everything looks like a modern game turned all the way down to low. <laughs> it is bad. And my last gripes are just with how basic everything looks from an overall design perspective and how often assets were reused. Every world you go on, you see the same shit used over and over. It's all super simple and it just feels lazy to me. And the game is huge with an endless amount of planets that you can go to and do missions on. But I would have preferred a much smaller world with more intentional and creative ideas used. It would have given the world more life and been way more immersive. Instead, it's oversaturated with bland and ugly assets that are copy and pasted all over. <laughs> Graphics are getting a two out of five stars. All right, audio's up next, and let's keep the trend rolling and start with the good stuff. MechWarrior 5 does have some good sound effects. The mechs sound awesome, first of all. Stomping around and the horizontal and vertical movement sounds of your torsos were all well done. The weapon sounds and explosions in the game were all right too. But here again, it's a total nosedive beyond that. Starting with the music, for me at least, it was horrible. Not in how it was written or sounded either. They actually used some heavy riffs that were jamming pretty hard at times, which I love. And in the beginning, I did like it. Eventually, however, I straight up had to turn it off because it was almost always pounding some heavy shit into my ears. 
It just didn't fit over half the time and took me out of the world by killing the vibe, unless I was in battle. Specifically, it hardly had any dynamic to it by not giving you space to breathe and take in what was going on in the game by using a variety of different music to capture a scene. There was never a feeling of building suspense before a fight or even panic if you started to lose one. It was just a constant wall of hard rock riffs that got super annoying. Music should complement the gameplay, but mech warriors more often than not just got in the way. On top of that, the character voice acting is complete shit, yo. Outside of Elias' parts, who you'd no doubt recognize from doing Adam Jensen's voice in the newer Deus Ex games, other than that, they were horribly executed. And the worst offenders were the voices that you had to hear the most, your own character and the crew on board your ship. <laughs> I felt like I was listening to voice acting from the first Far Cry. Hello? Are you there? Pick up the radio if you can hear this. I know you're there. I've been tracking you since you and Val arrived. Who are you? I'm the guy who's going to tell you how to survive. Call me Doyle. How do I know I can trust you? Well, for starters, how about the fact that I haven't turned you in? I wish we knew who was protecting Inferno. Maybe then we'd have more answers. It wouldn't hurt, I'll give you that. Right now, I suggest we take these assholes down a peg by accepting the contract and kicking their ass. Hell yeah. I thought you'd feel that way. I'll prepare the mission briefing while you work on getting us to the Coal Harbor system. Roger that. <laughs> it was just bad and another missed opportunity to do something captivating. I'm giving audio two out of five stars. Next up is the story and holy shit, where do I even begin? We have hit rock bottom y'all and despite all the grinding the game forces you to do, if the story had just been something unique, something captivating, or something that made me feel anything other than anger for having to grind so long for what felt like a slap in the face, then there may have been something more in this game for me. Sadly though, the characters are hollow, the writing is at a fourth grade level, and the plot delivers like finding the perfect skipping rock, throwing it, and watching it slice into the water without a single skip. <laughs> Basically, the story's based on avenging your father's death by going after a group of terrorists that killed him while trying to find some mysterious coordinates they tried to get out of him before knocking him off. Which, okay, that's a start, but there's not a single intriguing character, interesting plot twist, or exciting thing I experienced in the 40 plus hours I put into the game. It's just laggy cutscenes, crappy dialogue, predictable story arcs, and lifeless characters. <laughs> Yo, check out this clip of you talking to the engineer on your ship that does all the mech repairs. This is like after 30 hours in the game where you've learned absolutely nothing about this guy. He knew your father and decided to stay with you even though you're on this hella risky mission. And he's one of two characters on your ship that you can actually interact with. But not on your own terms. The game forces you to do it every once in a while, and this is what it looks like. Hey, boss man. Keeping me and the crew real busy lately. Glad to see the contracts rolling in. Like that. Doing a bloody good job too, gotta say. Just one thing though. You and your fellow pilots might want to dodge the enemy's fire a little bit, all right? We're running triple shifts after some of these jobs. And I know, I know you're doing your level best under the circumstances. I get that, I do, it ain't easy. All I'm saying is, try to bring the mechs home with all their limbs still attached. That's not too much to ask, is it? No, it isn't, mate. It's pretty bloody reasonable, I think. Well, there you go, some friendly advice on the house, Gov. Gonna get back to work now. Catch you later. <laughs> Just garbage. The devs clearly checked a lot of boxes here. They made a list, put boxes next to them, and those boxes got checked the f off. I didn't finish this shit story, and I am damn happy not to. Story is getting one out of five stars. All right, settings are up, and let's start with the key rebinds, which were all good for me. I rebound everything on the keyboard using WSAD, ESDF, and the numpad with no issues. 
My only complaint here though is I tried to use my joystick and the game only supports one type of joystick. Thankfully, the community put out some other joystick commands that you can add into the game's directory files. Unfortunately, since it wasn't built to support mine and many other models, I just found that it didn't work great. I know the joystick community has got to be pretty damn small, but if there was a game to do it in, this seems like the right one. The mechs in the game literally use joysticks to control them, so this was a bit of a disappointment. Video and graphics settings are up next, and these were all good. Everything is here, and honestly more than what you need to tweak the game to your liking. You can probably run MechWarrior 5 off a pretty old rig as well. It does run off of DX11, but the minimum GPU spec is a Radeon R9 290X, <laughs> which released in 2013, y'all. Maxed out, the game looks like it's from 2013 anyway, so no issues here. Mm, kinda. Moving on to audio, these are great. You get all the necessary settings to create the perfect mix however you want. And let's close it out with gameplay settings, which were okay. You get some standard stuff along with a few mech mechanic settings. However, they were missing colorblind modes and there's also only four language selections, which seems strange to me. There's no Spanish or Mandarin, which is disappointing. So they get dinged there for sure. I'm giving settings four out of five stars. All right, it is final score time, y'all. <sighs> Needless to say, Mech Warrior 5 was a huge disappointment to me. It was a major step backwards from the 2018 Battletech, and it completely fails to stake a claim for anything original or memorable in my opinion. Other than driving me completely freaking mad though. I'm giving it two out of five stars. I will give it a little credit where it earned it. It is fun stomping around in your mech, blowing up enemies and buildings and maneuvering around the battlefield with your squad. I did have some fun with that. It definitely kept my attention in the game a lot longer than I was expecting, but it's not amazing y'all. It's only okay. And it's really disappointing because I think they could have done so much more to be innovative and creative. And they failed all over the place, y'all. It looks like shit. <sighs> Running your business is boring. All the planets are the same. All the enemies are the same. All the missions are the same. Oh God, and I can still hear those guitar riffs and the voice acting. <sighs> It's an utter grind to get to story missions that just end up totally sucking. MechWarrior 5 straight up does not earn the right to demand the amount of time that it requires from you. So, if you're not a fan of mech games or never played them before, stay away from this one, y'all. Far, far away. And I can only slightly recommend it to the most devout MechWarrior fan, but even then, yo, don't buy this shit. Go back and buy the 2018 Battletech and have an amazing, brilliant experience. Because unfortunately, you're not gonna get that here. All right, that's it, y'all. Thank you so much for tuning in. You could have been anywhere on YouTube, but you kicked it here with me, and I appreciate you so much. Please like, subscribe, and leave a comment below. It really helps me out, and I would love to hear from you guys. Thanks again, and I will see you on the next Grim's Garage. GG. Yeah.